I want to talk about two concepts in this online lecture. I'll talk about the concept of the electric field, and I'll also introduce um, treating charge distributions that are not collections of point particles. Okay, so let's start with the electric field. Um, so we already talked about um, how two charged particles, or more than two, um, will exert forces on one another. And I mentioned in the last video that you can think about these forces as being due to exchange of particles. So you know, think of one proton throwing photons in all directions. Okay. Now the electric field is, um, you know, it can be thought of as a mathematical um, construct to simplify calculations, but it's a real physical entity. You, um, what we're going to think about now is if I just have one charged particle sitting in space and I don't have the second one, there's no, no force exerted on that char single charged particle and, and nothing around to feel a force, um, but we still think of that charged particle as exerting an influence on the space around it. So you can still think about that charged particle as throwing these virtual photons off in all directions and by doing that creates a field, okay, which we call the electric field. And this field is a real physical object. It actually contains energy, it turns out. Okay? Um, so even without two particles together, there's an electric field that is created by one particle um, that uh, if I now place a second particle in that field, it experiences a force. Okay? Um, all right, so formal definition of the electric field. What we do is imagine now that we take away one of these particles and just have one. And I'll tell you what, let me just redraw and get rid of these two. There we go. And so let's imagine I just have one particle here. Okay. And what I do is I imagine that I place a second particle over here. Let's say this one has charge big Q. Let's imagine, but not really do it, just thought experiment, that I place a particle of charge little q over here. And if I did that, I know there'd be a force here on this particle. And I can write down that force. Okay. Now the electric field will be that force divided by the value of the test charge. Okay. So it's the force per unit charge that this particle would exert if I put a um, uh, another particle somewhere else in space. Okay. So I can write this down. Um, you know, if I choose this to be my origin here, this, the location of the charged particle, then the, uh, and I call this distance here, little r now, the electric field would be the value q, the big charge, that's the charge that's actually there, divided by 4 pi epsilon naught, little r squared, r hat. Okay? That's the electric field of one charge. Okay. Now the force that if I put a real charge there, okay, the real charge um, would experience a force Q E. Okay, so now I can rewrite my uh, force Coulomb force law in this way and introduce this electric field. Um, now it's not so useful for a single charge particle, but as we'll see, if you have a, a large collection of particles and you're interested in the force on one of them, you can calculate the electric field due to all these other particles, and then um, that will be a field as a function of position in space. And if I imagine another charged particle moving through that field, I can calculate the force and its motion um, using this uh, electric field I've computed earlier. Okay. All right. Um, so before I move on to talk about that, just um, to generalize this to a coordinate system that doesn't have the charge Q at the origin, I can write down my origin here. I can define the location of my charge. I'll just call it um, R prime for now. This will be the location of my charge big Q. So here's big Q. And now I'm going to observe, have an observer location, uh, R. And this is where I'm going to calculate the value of the electric field or imagine placing a test charge. And what matters is the distance from the charge to the observation location. And I'm going to call that big R. Okay. So big R now is going to be R minus R prime. Okay. Uh, here now the electric field will be Q over 4 pi epsilon naught big R squared uh, R hat. Okay. Where R hat's defined the same way we did for the Coulomb force. Okay, Coulomb's law, I guess. All right. So um, 
that is um, the definition of the electric field. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Let's switch pages. Now let's uh, just remind you, so the electric field is computed the same way as the force, and so the notion of superposition applies. If I have a you know large collection of particles, you know, say I have within this volume, there's a lot of charged particles, okay? And the question is, what's the value of the electric field due to all these charged particles here? You just use superposition, okay, in the same way you do force, okay? So if I define my origin to be here, and I define the location of the ith particle to be r prime i, and then I have a location for my observation location that's r, I'm going to have a vector that connects those two, that's going to be Ri, okay, where Ri is R minus R prime I, where I use the prime to denote the location of the actual charge. So in this case, the electric field, okay, and the electric field will be a function of this um, position in space, R, the observation location, which is a vector, um, will be the sum over all the charges that, that are over here in this, um, oops, sorry, okay, over here in this charge cloud, um, times uh, sum of qi over 4 pi epsilon naught ri squared ri hat for the vector, okay? Um, now, just to point out, I didn't say this in the discussion about the, Coulomb, the Coulomb's law, but you're summing over a vector here, so this is not a trivial sum. You, uh, you're not just summing over a, a scalar, okay? So you have to sum over all these vectors, and if you look, and I'll mess up this drawing to help explain this, but the, the vectors um, are going to have different components as they go, so these ri's. Um, and so it's not going to, you're going to have to break it into components to really sum this up, to do this vector sum. So it's not trivial to do this sum, and we'll go through some examples in later videos and in class, okay? But just keep in mind this is a vector sum, not just the sum of the q over r squared. You have to multiply by the vector and then break it up into components and sum up the components to get it right, okay? All right, good. Um, all right, second concept now. So that's the definition of the electric field. We've written down an example. Again, remind you the electric field is um, has a real physical meaning, as we'll discuss later on in this course. Um, but now let's talk about transitioning away from point particle uh, distributions like what I've drawn up here. Um, to situation where you have a continuous distribution of charge. Now, you might ask the question, why would I do that? Because uh, in reality, you know, we know that charge is, in fact, discrete. We have electrons, protons. Um, you know, electrons, as far as we know, are point particles with charge. Protons have a little bit of structure to them because they have, they're made up of, they're composite particles made up of quarks, but, you know, we treat it as a point particle with charge. And so the, the reality is, you know, the table that I'm sitting in front of right now that you can't see is made up of a lot of little point particles. But there's so many of them that, you know, I squint and look at it, it looks to me like I've got a continuous distribution of charge throughout the table, okay? Or at least I can model things in that way by thinking about instead of uh, sprinkling point, point particles throughout the table, I imagine I have a, a, a peanut butter spread, a charge spread, I guess, where it's a smooth, smooth distribution, there's charge distributed smoothly throughout, and I just spread the peanut butter over the table, and I can you know, think about the charge spread out in that way. Um, so if I have that kind of situation, let's take an object now with that's not discrete particles, but it's this smooth distribution of charge. Um, I can calculate the electric field in the same way, but what I can do is just pick out a little bit of the stuff, of the charged peanut butter, and ask the question, what's the electric field it creates at this location here? Um, and what I'll do is I'll consider this to be a little bit of uh, charge, and so I'll have a dq right here. Okay, and actually, let me stick with capital Q. Okay, dq here. And it's going to create a little bit of electric field, DE, over here, okay? And I can use the same coordinate systems as before, 
I'm going to have this be the origin. I'm going to have this be R prime for that little bit of DQ. And this be, I didn't draw that very well, but this is going to be R. Okay, so I can write down that the, the, the uh, little bit of electric field that that little bit of charge creates, I can write as dq over 4 pi epsilon naught r um, squared, where r is defined in the same way as before r hat. Okay, um, and now to find the sum, what I can do is integrate over... Um, over this, all these little bits. I'm going to add them up. So, you know, doing, I'm going to sum up all the little bits of charge and their contributions to the electric field. That's equivalent to doing an integral. And so, what I'll do is I'll integrate the electric field now, and this is a vector. I should denote that here too. Okay. The electric field as a function of position will be now an integral over adding up all of those little dqs, 4 pi, epsilon naught. Um, r squared r hat. Now I need to do a better job of describing how to do this integral and I have to go to the next page, sorry, so let me do it there. Um, so if I have, um, let's imagine I'll define that my uh, continuous distribution of charge, I've spread charge uniform, not necessarily uniformly, but continuously, so it's not just little bits here and there, it's a spread of charge. I'll define the density of charge to be rho, and it has a function of position. Um, and so the total charge on this blob of stuff will be the integral of rho okay, over that volume. Okay, And so my little bit of charge at a location, say here, dq, will be the value of the density, the charge density. This is the charge per unit volume here. Charge density times some volume element dv. Okay, and now my integral for the electric field, if I do that, replace dq with rho dv, will be an integral now of rho. Now rho depends on space, but the, the variable that I'm moving as I do the integral is r prime. Because that, what I'm doing is I'm moving over the distribution of charge, and if you go, you know, I can go back here to the previous page, and that's going to be um, kind of moving this variable r prime around, you know, moving it here and here and here, and integrating over all this charge to, ca to add up the electric field here, okay? So the integral is over the primed variable, um, r prime, and so I'm going to integrate over, and instead of writing dv, what I'll do is I'll write d cubed r prime. That's the same thing. It's just another way to write it. It just means I'm integrating over the volume of the charge that I'm interested in. Um, 4 pi epsilon naught um, r squared, uh, where r is now r uh, minus r prime times r hat. Okay. All right, so this is not a trivial integral. You have this vector sense in it. It makes it difficult to integrate because I have to integrate components and then add them all up after I'm done. So that makes it tricky. Uh, okay, so I'll stop with that definition. Next video, I'll do an example.